There are various ways to withdraw money penalty free from your TSP account before you turn age 59 and a half, but most of the reasons involve life events. However, there are two exceptions that allow you to retire early and still avoid the 10% early withdrawal tax. In this video, we're going to focus on those two methods. That's coming up, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jarrell Harvey with Fedway Financial, and this is The Money Briefing. On this channel, we cover topics related to personal finance, federal benefits, and retirement planning. So if you find this video helpful, please consider sharing and subscribing. Within the federal government, there are many employees who are eligible to retire before reaching age 59 and a half. And there's also a lot of employees who have worked in the government for 20 or 25 years who do not qualify for an immediate retirement, but who want to retire or separate from federal service. For individuals that fall into one of these two buckets, having access to your TSP without incurring an additional 10% penalty can be very beneficial to supplementing your income. Typically, you must be age 59 and a half to take distributions from your TSP in other retirement accounts without a 10% early withdrawal tax. But the IRS does allow some exceptions to this rule. When you retire or separate from the federal government, the method that you apply to avoid the early withdrawal tax will largely depend on your age. More specifically, the line in the sand is age 55. In fact, the first exception that I want to discuss is called the Rule of 55. To be eligible for the Rule of 55, you'll need to leave federal service during or after the calendar year in which you turn age 55. It doesn't matter whether you retire, get laid off, or just quit. You can take penalty-free TSP withdrawals if you leave in or after the year you turn 55. However, you cannot retire earlier and then try to apply the rule when you turn the appropriate age. For example, you can't retire at age 53 and start taking penalty-free withdrawals at age 55. The rule will not work under that circumstance. Additionally, that money must remain in your TSP. If you transfer the funds to an IRA before turning 59 and a half, you will lose the penalty protection. If you have money in retirement accounts from previous employers, the rule will only apply to your TSP, assuming that the federal government is your current or most recent employer. If you have money in other retirement accounts like a 401k or traditional IRA, that you want to access by using the rule of 55, you should consider rolling those funds over to the TSP before separating from federal service. Any money in your TSP account when you leave the government will qualify for the rule of 55. If you're a special category employee, such as a law enforcement officer, firefighter, or air traffic controller, the rule is slightly different for you. Previously, all the same rules applied to special category employees but the rule just started five years earlier at age 50. But with the passing of Secure Act 2.0, the rule has actually expanded. Section 329 of the act extends the exception to cover employees with at least 25 years of service at any age. This modification closely aligns with the OPM retirement rules. So special category employees can be either age 50 or they can be any age with 25 years of service to be exempt from the 10% penalty. The second method that you can use to avoid an early withdrawal penalty before age 59 and a half is through a series of substantially equal periodic payments, which is often called a SEPP. It is also referred to as Rule 72T since this guideline is found under Section 72T of the IRS tax code. This method is not as flexible as the Rule of 55 and it caters more to individuals who separate from federal service under the age of 55, since there's no minimum age requirement to utilize this technique. But with the SEPP plan, you must take specified annual distributions for a period of five years or until you turn 59 and a half, whichever comes later. So for example, if you begin a SEPP at age 52, you will have to abide by the plan's restrictions for about seven and a half years. Because you have to stick with this method for at least five years, it may not be the best option if you only need a short-term cash infusion or a one-time payout. 
Once the periodic payments are established, you cannot make any additions to your TSP account, nor can you take any payments from the account other than the specified amount. You are allowed to receive the payments in an annual, quarterly, or monthly installments. However, if the series of payments are not followed properly, or if modifications are made to your TSP account, you could find yourself owing the 10% penalty, not only on withdrawals taken from that current year, but also for previous years too. This is sometimes referred to as the recapture penalty. Generally, the payment amount is calculated in one of three ways. There's the required minimum distribution method. There's also the fixed amortization method. And lastly, there's the fixed annuitization method. With each method, several factors are taken into consideration, such as your account balance, your age, and the life expectancy table that you choose. Under the required minimum distribution method, the withdrawal amount will vary from year to year, but with the other two methods, the payment will be fixed for the duration of the payment program. You are allowed one change from one of the fixed payment methods to the RMD method. This change is available one time only and is not treated as a modification. If you apply the rule of 72T or the rule of 55 that we discussed earlier, you should keep in mind that income tax must still be paid on the withdrawals even though the 10% early withdrawal penalty may be waived. Ultimately, determine whether or not to take early withdrawals under either method will depend on your unique financial situation. Both methods offer advantages and disadvantages, and you'll want to have a clear understanding of how much you need to withdraw to help cover your annual living expenses during your early retirement years. If you have comments or questions about either withdrawal method or federal benefits, you can add them in the comments section below, or you can email us at ask at fedwayfinancial.com. Additionally, if you receive any value from this video, please click the like button. You can also subscribe to our channel to get more content like this. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next Money Briefing.